The cage bird sings with the fearful trill of things unknown, but longed for still, and his tune is heard on the distant hill, for the cage bird sings of freedom. I know why the cage bird sings, by Maya Angelou. Maya Angelou was an American writer, poet, and civil rights activist. She was born in St. Louis, Missouri, and spent much of her early life in the American South. Angelou had a difficult childhood, experiencing trauma, abuse, and racism, and was later a teenage mother. Despite these challenges, she went on to become a celebrated author, poet, and public speaker, known for her powerful writing and stirring performances. Angelo's most famous work is her memoir, I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings, which chronicles her early life and has become a classic in African-American literature. She was also a prolific poet, with numerous collections of poetry to her name. In addition to her writing, Angelou was a prominent civil rights activist, working alongside figures such as Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X. She received many awards and honors throughout her life, including the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2010, and is remembered as one of the most influential voices of the 20th century. Maya Angelou's work explores a variety of themes, many of which reflect her own personal experiences and the experiences of Black women in America. Angelou's poetry often emphasizes the power and strength of women, Black people, and other marginalized groups. She frequently celebrates their resilience and ability to overcome adversity through her poetry. She also explores the complexities of love and relationships, including themes of passion, loss, and longing. Her poetry emphasizes the importance of accepting oneself and loving oneself despite societal pressures and expectations. We know that she was a civil rights activist, and her poetry often addresses issues of racism, sexism, and social inequality. She frequently calls for justice and equality for all people. Resilience is another important theme that can be seen in her poetry. She often writes about the strength of the human spirit and the ability to overcome obstacles. Many of Angelo's poems explore the importance of family and community as well. She frequently writes about the ways in which relationships with others can shape one's life and identity. These are some of her widely read poems. If you are interested in reading them, please go to this website, poemhunter.com, and read them. Maya Angelou was a multi-talented individual who had several roles throughout her life. She was best known as a writer and poet, but she also worked as an actress, singer, dancer, and civil rights activist. I have selected some of her widely recognized views on different aspects of human life. Please pause the video and make sure to read and enjoy them. The poem we are going to appreciate today was first published in her 1983 book of poems titled Shake Her, Why Don't You Sing? And the title of the poem was Caged Bird. But in the anthology, this poem is given under the title 
I know why the cage bird sings. Interestingly, there's a memoir written under the same name by Maya Angelou and it was published in 1969. I'll recite the poem before the explanation. Caged Bird by Maya Angelou A free bird leaps on the back of the wind and floats downstream till the current ends and dips his wings in the orange sun rays and dares to claim the sky. But a bird that stalks down his narrow cage can seldom see through his bars of rage. His wings are clipped and his feet are tied, so he opens his throat to sing. The cage bird sings with the fearful trill of things unknown, but longed for still and his tune is heard on the distant hill. For the cage bird sings of freedom. The free bird thinks of another breeze, and the trade winds soft through the sighing trees, and the fat worms waiting on a dawn bright lawn, and he names the sky his own. But a caged bird stands on the grave of dreams, his shadow shouts on a nightmare scream, his wings are clipped and his feet are tied. So he opens his throat to sing. The cage bird sings with the fearful trill of things unknown, but long for still, and his tune is heard on the distant hill, for the cage bird sings of freedom. Before you continue watching the video, please pause this and take down the meanings of the unfamiliar words and phrases in your textbook. The poem Caged Bird by Maya Angelou explores the theme Freedom versus Oppression. Freedom versus Oppression. The poem describes two birds, one that is free to fly and another that is trapped in a cage. Here the images of free bird and caged bird are used as metaphors. Since the metaphor is used throughout the poem, we call it an extended metaphor. Extended metaphor. In the first stanza, the writer describes the actions of the free bird. Leaps on the back of the wind, floats downstream, dips his wings, dares to claim the sky. Here the free bird symbolizes the much privileged people in the society. But in the Afro-American context, here free bird means the white people. It also is a symbol for freedom, independence, and the ability to fully experience the world. So, free bird here can be a symbol for what? The white in the Afro American context, privileged people, and also it means the freedom independence, ability to fully experience the world. The free bird is able to fly wherever it wishes without any hindrance. Leaps on the back of the wind suggest a sense of freedom and agility. Agility. He glides smoothly in the direction of the wind. It indicates a sense of ease and gracefulness. Once again, sense of ease and gracefulness. 
The poet describes the free bird's interaction with the natural world through the lines, dips his wing in the orange sun rays. Orange sun rays indicate that the time is either the early morning or the evening. Also note that orange is often associated with warmth, energy and enthusiasm. Warmth, energy and enthusiasm. Dares to claim the sky. This means the bird is bold enough to claim the sky as his own. His sense of ownership over the world it inhabits is clearly portrayed through this line. This suggests sense of ownership. In the second stanza, the poet describes the cage bird. The image of a bird stalks down his narrow cage suggests a sense of restlessness and frustration as if the bird is pacing back and forth within its confined space. Confined space here is the cage. He can seldom see through his bars of rage. Bars of rage here is a metaphor. It once again refers to the frustration and fury due to the confinement. The use of the word rage suggests the bird's captivity is not just a physical limitation, but also an emotional one. This also hints us that the extreme anger has turned him blind, as the writer says, Cage bird can seldom see through his bars of rage. This can also be due to the fact that his wings are clipped and feet are also tied. The image bars of rage also highlights the injustice of the bird's situation and the violence of its confinement as if the bird is being imprisoned against its will. The last line, so he opens his throat to sing. This refers to the cage bird's desire to express itself even in the face of adversity. This can be taken as a metaphor for its desire to communicate and to connect with the others. Also, opens his throat suggests a deliberate and forceful action on the part of the bird. The singing of the bird can also be interpreted as a form of resistance, a way of defying the limitation that have been imposed upon him. In the third stanza, the caged bird is described as singing with the fearful trill. The fearful trill can be interpreted as a trembling or quivering of the bird's voice, as if the bird is singing with a sense of trepidation or uncertainty. The stanza goes on to explain that the bird is singing about things unknown but long for still, which suggests a sense of yearning for something beyond the confines of its cage. Despite the fear and uncertainty that the bird feels, it is still driven by a powerful desire for freedom and the unknown possibilities that come with it. The final lines of the stanza, for the cage bird sings of freedom, reinforce this theme, emphasizing the importance of hope and the human spirit's ability to persevere in the face of adversity. The image of the bird song carrying on to a distant hill suggests that its message of hope and freedom can still reach beyond the confines of its immediate environment. In this stanza, the free bird is described as imagining and longing for new experiences and sensations beyond its immediate surroundings.
the line the free bird thinks of another breeze can be interpreted as a metaphor for the free bird's desire for new experiences and opportunities. The bird is not content to simply exist in its current environment, but is always looking for new adventures and challenges. The image of the breeze suggests a sense of movement and change, as if the free bird is constantly searching for something new and exciting to experience. Then the image of the trade wind soft through the sighing trees suggests a peaceful and idyllic natural environment far from the confining walls of the cage. The phrase and the fat worms waiting on a dawn bright lawn reinforces the image of the natural world evoking a sense of abundance and plenty. The pre-bird's ability to name the sky his own suggests a sense of ownership and mastery over its environment, further highlighting the bird's sense of freedom and agency. Overall, this stanza contrasts the experiences of the free bird with those of the cage bird, highlighting the stark contrast between freedom and captivity. In this stanza, the image of the cage bird standing on the grave of dreams represents the bird's sense of hopelessness and despair. This metaphor suggests that the bird's dreams and aspirations have died, leaving it with nothing but a grave upon which to stand. The second line of the stanza, his shadow shouts on a nightmare scream, intensifies the feeling of despair and suggests a sense of terror or horror. The cage bird's shadow is personified as if it has a voice of its own, shouting in a nightmare scream, emphasizing the bird's sense of fear and helplessness. His wings are clipped and his feet are tied. This line reinforces the image of the bird's physical confinement, emphasizing the many ways in which the bird's freedom has been curtailed. Despite all of these limitations, however, the bird continues to sing. The final line, so he opens his throat to sing, highlights the bird's determination to express itself and to maintain its sense of identity, even in the face of extreme adversity. Overall, this stanza is a powerful depiction of the ways in which confinement and oppression can crush the human spirit. But it also emphasizes the importance of resilience and the human capacity for self-expression and resistance. The final stanza of the poem repeats the first stanza of the poem, underscoring the central theme of the poem and emphasizing its message. The cage bird is once again described as singing with the fearful trill of things unknown but long for still. Despite the bird's confinement and fear, it continues to sing of freedom, expressing its desire for liberation and self-expression. The lion and his tune is heard on the distant hill suggests that the bird's message has the potential to reach beyond the confines of its cage and to touch the lives of others who may be similarly confined or oppressed. The repetition of the phrase for the cage bird sings of freedom reinforces the importance of this message and its relevance to anyone who has ever felt confined or oppressed. The final stanza of the poem, like the rest of the poem, can be interpreted as a metaphor for the struggle for freedom 
and self-expression, especially in the face of systemic oppression and injustice. Let's discuss the themes of the poem. The very first one is freedom and captivity. The poem explores the contrast between the free bird's experience of freedom and the cage bird's experience of captivity. It highlights the importance of freedom and the negative effects of confinement and limitation. Second theme is equality and inequality. The poem touches on issues of equality and inequality, particularly in the context of race and racism. It suggests that the certain groups may be denied equal opportunities and face significant obstacles in pursuing their dreams and aspirations. The poem highlights the power dynamics at play in society as well as the experience of powerlessness that can result from oppression and confinement. This also explores the importance of dreams and aspirations and the impact that confinement and limitation can have on an individual's ability to achieve their goals. Oppression and resistance. The poem touches on the experience of oppression and the ways in which individuals and groups may resist and challenge oppressive systems and structures. Nature and the natural world. The poem celebrates the beauty and serenity of the natural world and contrasts this with the experience of confinement and limitation. Voice and silence. The poem suggests that the ability to express oneself and have one's voice heard is an important aspect of freedom and equality in a society. Last one is fear and anxiety. The poem explores the negative emotions that can arise from confinement and limitation such as fear and anxiety. What are the techniques employed by the writer in the poem Caged Bird? One of the most important techniques is metaphor. Here the poet has used the extended metaphors of the two birds, the caged bird and the free bird. Apart from those, Bars of rage and grave of dreams are also metaphors. Bars of rage indicates the frustration, despair and also confinement of the caged bird. And here grave of dreams indicates the dead of dreams of the caged bird. Then what about personification? The writer has personified the two birds, caged bird and the free bird throughout the poem. Apart from those, sign trees and shadow, his shadow shout, those are examples for personification. Using the word sign, trees are being personified. Using the mm, words his shouts, the writer has personified the cage bird's shadow. Then symbolism. What are the symbols used here? Throughout the poem, Angelou has used symbols. The caged bird can be seen as a symbol representing black Americans and other oppressed social groups due to various aspects such as class, caste, religion, gender and political beliefs. The free bird symbolizes the white community and also people who have money, wealth and privileges in the society. Here, the white community means the community in Afro-American context. Then what about imagery? Throughout the poem, the writer creates a disturbing mental picture of a bird who is confined to a cage, as well as a breathtaking picture of a free bird who enjoys wonders of nature. The writer repeats 
some of the words, phrases, and lines in the poem. Those are examples for repetition and refrain. Some lines are regularly repeated. Those are the examples for refrain. His wings are clipped and his feet are tied. So he opens his throat to sing. It's repeated here as well in this stanza. So this is an example for refrain. Then what about the sound devices, alliteration, assonance, consonance? Those are sound devices. Examples for alliteration, seldom see sir sound is repeated. Here his tune is heard, her sound is repeated. Trade winds soft through the sighing trees, sir sound is repeated. Then assonance, repetition of vowel sound, dips his wings, e sound is repeated. Wings are clipped, e sound is repeated. Longed for, O sound is repeated. Consonance, nice example for consonance here. Trade winds soft through the sighing trees. S sound is repeated. Then what about irony? Throughout the poem the writer creates irony through the portrayal of the two bird, caged bird and the free bird. By contrasting these two birds, the writer creates irony in the poem. Then end rhyme. We do not find a regular rhyme scheme in the poem, but there are some words rhymed in the poem. For example here, leaps, ends, wings, and rays, leaps and wings, ends and rays, those are rhymed. And then once again here, trill, still, hill, those are repeated. Even in this stanza, breeze, trees, those are rhyming words. And dreams and scream, those are rhyming words. So these are the techniques employed by the writer. Apart from these, the ones I have labeled here, we can also find enjambment or run-on lines throughout the poem, as well as anaphora. Anaphora is repetition of some of the words in the beginning of consecutive lines in a poem. Here, and, and is repeated. This is a nice example for anaphora. So these are the Techniques employed by the writer in the poem Caged Bird. This is my explanation to the poem I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings by Maya Angelou. I'll come back with another Booktopia lesson. <laughs>